Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here at uh, 9.30. Uh, uh, is it uh, your first session over here or this morning? Already did a couple? Or maybe one? Good, good. All right, guys, yeah, so this is a 30-minute session uh, talking about uh, some of the experiences uh, we are seeing with our partners uh, around this whole uh, network programmability, automation, DevOps, uh, all of these things uh, which are this whole section is about. Uh, so they have all, only given me 30 minutes for this. However, I have another session at 11 a.m., uh, which is uh, for 11 to 12, one hour session, so I'll go a little bit in more detail. So in this session, I'll, it'll be more of an overview, so if you look up my name, you'll see that 11 a.m. session in the schedule as well, and you could, you know, most welcome to join over there as well. It's a bigger crowd. Uh, and uh, I'll go in more examples and details. However, uh, I'm Salman Asadullah. Um, I'm one of the distinguished engineers here in Cisco, and also CTO for the America's Partner Organization. So everything, uh, so we have channel partners, right? And uh, Cisco does 80% of their business with their partners, uh, just like a lot of other vendors as well. And uh, basically, uh, within that uh, space, uh, if you really see traditionally, there are a lot of wars, right, uh, which are uh, in their uh, comfort zone, just like Cisco, right? So we were doing a lot of the traditional networking stuff, but in the last two, three years, we are trying to kind of move towards where the industry is really going. So what we, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the things what we're doing with our partners and also with our internally with our engineers, uh, like for instance, in our America's partner organization, we have like 350 uh, um, SCs, engineers, right? And who work with some of the, these uh, bigger, smaller, medium size, all the partners from North America, from Canada, all the way down to Chile, right? So, so if you really see um, some of the, uh, the technology changes, right? Depending on who you ask, there are half a dozen to dozen uh, technology transitions which are happening, right? So. I'm not going to go in a lot of details, so this is more of an, I'll just kind of stress on some of the key things, what we are doing to develop that skill set. Um, so 11 o'clock session, I'll go in a little bit more detail. But these, all these names, the buzzwords you see over here, they, you're seeing all of these things, which are different than what our partners or customers were doing over uh, the last decade or two decades, right? They were more uh, traditional, everything is going through CLI and uh, you know, I, I'm a double CCIE, everybody loves their CCIA, right? I, or um, their CLI, I would say. So basically, uh, but because of all of these uh, technology transitions, this is changing the role of IT. So uh, having, you know, a certain number of engineers doing a certain project for a certain number of days is just not going to cut it anymore, right? So that's why we're sort of talking about automate everything. So I was just in a, uh, one of the customer meetings uh, with one of the large um, uh, customers, and I happened to know uh, these folks from the past. And they said, man, you guys, you guys call this this SDN, Software Defined Networking. We've been doing it for the last two years, three years in our environment, and we call it Software Driven Networking, right? So what it really means that we are really automating a lot of things what we used to do manually, right? So. Uh, Keeping that in mind, what are some of the challenges? Why, uh, what is really happening uh, to kind of make that shift happen or make things uh, go towards that direction? Uh, this is one of the key problems, right? So you have, a, you have in any network, you have the, basically the application architects and you got the network architects. And they both kind of look at the networks or their things in a totally different way. We being CCIEs and all that sort of stuff, we love, love our VLANs and IP addresses and routing protocols and all that sort of good stuff, right? But the app, app uh, person doesn't really care about that, and arguably, they shouldn't be, right? All they should care about that, you know, these are the apps, these are the things that needs to be done, and how we can um, get them deployed as soon as possible. So, so basically what is, is really needed, that there has to be a common language, because these our app developers they don't speak network at all, right? But so they have to be a common language. So what does it really mean that our CCIs? If and I'm sort of really uh, 
uh, this is a two hour talk. I'm just kind of really trying to squeeze with some key points over here, right? So again, as I said, 11 o'clock, I'm talking in a little bit more detail. If you look up my name, you, you can see that session at 11. It's a one hour session, so I'll go in a little bit more detail. So, so there has to be a common language. So what it means that our CCIEs, right? If you see this whole DevNet zone, you gotta start learning some of the Python Puppet Chef skills, right? And, uh, and which, is not, which is not impossible. And the one example I give, I have a niece, right? She's in eighth grade uh, in Silicon Valley. I know it's Silicon Valley, so don't hate me. But they're doing, in eighth grade, they, they're doing a Python uh, project in their class, right? So that's how simple that language is, right? And uh, on the other hand, what we're doing that our, the, the folks in the application side, they have to have you know, some of the CCNA level skills so they can understand that what really happens, right? So there's a need for this common language. And if you see this whole DevNet zone is kind of talking about uh, uh, enabling or promoting those skills. Uh, so what are uh, some of the skills which are required, right? So before we even kind of get into some of those uh, skills which are required, we need to kind of understand how the, the enterprise or SP architects or network architects are, are built, right? So there are basically three uh, sort of, uh, 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 I would say, levels or in any network, right? Starting from business architecture, information, and technology architectures. Business architecture, this is where basically a company decides that which direction they're gonna be going into. What are some of the things they're gonna be doing in the next uh, two years, four years, or six years, whatever the case is. Based on those uh, requirements, um, information uh, architecture folks are brought into the picture because they build those applications to, to get to the goals what company is basically moving towards, right? And in the end, really, basically, we being the plumbers, it's sort of pushed us to us that, okay, you know what? Just go uh, get this network ready for us, right? However, if you really start to kind of see um, or understand that um, in all of these uh, areas, there's certain skills which are required, right? In all of these skill, skills, there's certain, um, uh, all of these areas, skills, certain skills are required. So let me ask something over here. How many of partners are here in this room right now? Like from the partner space? Okay, I see a couple, right? Or three, that's good. Uh, but basically what is happening, our partners are mainly sort of uh, playing in this area, right here in the, in the technology architecture, right? We, in, the, in the top over, over there, the business architecture, that's where the McKinsey's of the world, right? The, uh, all these business, business consulting which is happening. But guess what, as you kind of move up the stack, that's where most of the money has to be made, right? The applications, the software, right? So what we are sort of working with our partners that you know what, yes, you're good in this network design area, but start developing these skills over here, right? And then kind of try to move up the stack. So, um, with all of these skills, there's some new roles which has to be defined, right? Because these are some of the roles uh, we don't have, we don't, it, it doesn't exist in our partner base, right? So for instance, if I want to kind of develop cloud, uh, cloud skills, right? Uh, when I talk about cloud, what am I really talking about, right? Let's say if we kind of go a little bit vertical, is it about OpenStack? Yes, okay, okay if it's about OpenStack, then basically we need to kind of understand that, we, you know what? We have basically, um, if you kind of go into a little bit deeper vertical sort of knowledges, then what kind of person I'm going to bring into my, my team? Is it going to be looking into uh, uh, canonical or Red Hat, OpenStack, right? So they are vertical expertise, and they're people who are sort of cross architecture, they kind of understand the whole thing, right? So there's cer certain skills needs to be developed in each of these areas. Now, if you really see, this is pretty overwhelming, right? So where do you really start? So this is quickly talking about um, what are some of the areas you need to kind of start in, is again, these two areas, right? So I would say, you're already sort of good in this, the technology architecture, right? You know the, uh, the, the technologies you're good in. You, kinda, you, kinda, you have to kind of develop the skills that your network engineer starts to consume 
some of the things what are, what are shown over here, right? So I'm not asking my CCIEs to become programmers, right? What I'm asking them that, you know what? Cisco, all the other vendors you work with, everybody is opening up their a APIs. They're all giving you SDKs, right? So you can do a lot of this automation work. So at least you're able to consume some of these uh, uh, APIs, some of these um, SDKs, right? And on top of that, that there will be certain people, and as I said, there a lot of money needs to be made, that that's where you'll have to kind of bring people in this area, right? Real application developers. And this is where the difference between uh, understanding the organic and inorganic growth. So what I mean, that when I say organic and inorganic growth, organic is somebody that I have my CCIEs, I start to do some skill uh, uh, assessment, right? And most of us are, are engineers, right? Uh, doesn't matter what, uh, when we started, maybe we did some sort of programming, some sort of scripting, COBOL, Fortran, whatever we did in the past, right? But the logic is the same, right? So I have sort, those sort of people exist in my teams. So what I really need to do to kind of start exposing them to some of the new things which are happening, like Puppet, Chef, Python, right? Simple languages need to kind of spend some time so they can start understanding those things and start consuming these REST APIs to automate a lot of those things which they're doing manually right now. And then inorganic growth, what I really mean is basically that if I'm, you know, I'm a partner and I want to build a, uh, let's say, a, uh, let's say a, a big data practice, right? I'm not going to just throw a couple of week training on my one of my engineers and he'll become a data analytics champion or a scientist. It's not going to happen, right? So that's where we'll have to bring those people from outside. Right? We'll have to do those investments. If, if we happen to, you know, as a company working in that direction, that's, those are my business goals. So there's a very clear di distinction, um, understanding the, the, the differences between organic and inorganic growth within your teams. Right? So, <clears throat> so here's a quick sort of a, a way that where you really start. There are a lot of architectures out there. Right? If you start looking at up there, uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit uh, in detail, that the first thing you need to kind of start, that you have to have um, uh, uh, come up with a plan, right? Have a people both from operations and sales. Operations people are very important because they're in the trenches. They know that, you know, what challenges are going to, uh, uh, they're going to be seeing once, okay, sales guys, they just go and sell the technology, right? But who really deploys it is the operation guys. So they have to be part of that uh, whole team. And then uh, basically define a, ba a baseline, right? And build a recruitment plan for missing skills and roles. Think what I, I basically talked about, that uh, come up with some sort of software skill survey, right? Because as I said, you'll find people within your customer base uh, or within your teams that they have done some stuff in the past. So you have to come up, you have to identify those folks. Because I'm not going to just, get, if I have like 20 people in my team, I'm not going to just put 20 people and develop those skills. Okay, you, everybody's kind of start doing that. You have to keep your lights on, right? The things what you're already doing. So out of those 20 people, I'll maybe take two, three, four people who I have already identified that, you know, back in the days they were Fortran programmers, right? But they were, they're sort of uh, in that... Uh, mode that they still want to learn, they still want to keep their edge, right? I'll put those three, four people and start kind of working with them, right? And then, uh, now, there are a lot of architectures out there, right? Um, you see on the first line, there are a lot of architectures and everybody, every customer, every partner is focusing on certain architectures. But now, you know, if you wanted to really start somewhere, I would say start with this data center cloud area because that's where most of the action is happening when it comes to automation, when it comes to DevOps, when it comes to network programmability, right? Although, uh, let's say, you know, you're, uh, you're uh, one of the collaboration guys. There, basically, if you go out here, you'll see there are tons of, um, uh, in DevNet Zone, you'll see the examples of the APIs around collaboration. Or if you see um, uh, Epic EM, right, which is an enterprise, uh, thing, right? So you ha you'll see all of these things which, based on where you're focusing, you can start plugging those people in and getting them introduced to these new ways of doing things much faster and um, uh, to basically, what, what is, uh, what's the bottom line? What is, what is, 
really happening. When I talk to my engineers, you know, what I say, that doesn't matter if you stay in Cisco or you go anywhere else, right? You got to learn these skills because that's where the industry is going. You got to market, you're going to up, up level your skills. You're going to basically get the, uh, 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 you're going to market yourself much better, right? And uh, so keeping this uh, stuff in mind, uh, this part over here is really important. So let me tell you, you know, I am basically, um, uh, I have a, a, a small, um, like I said, 350 engineers, but to me, uh, in my, I have only one guy who reports to me, right? I'm a, I'm a more of a technical guy, a distinguished engineer. Um, uh, I do a lot of work in the industry, uh, patents, this and that, right? I have only one guy, I said, you know, I asked my manager, man, I need one guy. So he said, okay, go hire one guy, you know? So who I brought, I brought one guy who just recently did his uh, a BS in computer science, right? He didn't know anything about network, but he knew, you know, the C, Python, uh, he didn't know a Puppet or Chef, but he knew a little bit of Python, right? So I brought him in and started to kind of uh, work with him, right? I said, okay, you know what, uh, man, you go and make sure whatever you, um, learn some Puppet Chef, you're gonna be doing some stuff, automation, coming up with some uh, cool API, uh, some cool scripts to do certain things, right? Uh, but uh, on the side, continue working on your CCNA for data center, right? See, there are multiple levels now, right? You can uh, cut it down and do it in stages. So he's working on that, and on the side, he's basically focusing on the, some of the things what I'm asking him to do, right? So what I'm seeing in last six months, the guy is already, you know, he's like uh, uh, busting multiple skills that multiple scripts are, and it's just contributing to GitHub, right? That uh, if I wanna, if how many, how many of you are, are uh, learning about ACI? Everybody, right? Everybody. So the thing is that uh, what is ACI is all around, right? Application-centric infrastructure, right? We're opening up our, our uh, APIs, right? So on the, if, if you have the REST APIs and you know these skills, you can automate a lot of those things to really do things what you used to do in a weeks or months, you could do it in days and hours, okay? So this is a very important point. Work with your local universities. If you're a customer, your partner, whatever the case is, or at your level, work with your local universities, computer science departments, right? Get the, something going on with them, right? Do some, some sort of a uh, training program, some sort of internship program to start uh, bringing folks and attracting folks uh, to your uh, companies. And uh, so this is what I'm talking about, a hybrid engineer, right? These are, in, in my book, this is what a hybrid engineer means because it doesn't matter what technology you're looking into or focusing into being a customer or a partner, these skills are very common, right? You're gonna see that the, the, the APIs, the, the programming, coding, all of that stuff is, is, is very, very important, right? So the, the thing is the people who are just gonna stay uh, in their shells and they say, oh, you know what, I'm not gonna do this stuff, the, you know, uh, I will see in the next five years, our traditional wars, if they don't go towards this thing, they'll have a lot of problems, right? Because they're not working, they're not keep, keeping up their skills and not moving with where the industry is moving. So this is what I'm, I'm kind of talking about. The effective engineer tomorrow will have both solid networking skills. And this, keep in mind that I'm not saying that your CCIs doesn't, doesn't mean any, anything anymore. It means a lot. Because you know what? that there's a, an SDN world, right? You're doing a lot of these demos. There's a concept called TIF, Topology Independent Forwarding. So my IGP is telling me that, you know, OSPF is telling me that take this route. But the, the guy who doesn't have any idea about networking comes in through a GUI and said, you know what, I'm, gonna, I, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna take a different route because of some business decisions, right? But you know what, this guy, if he doesn't know anything about the infrastructure, they're gonna break the network down, right? They're gonna cause a lot of problems. So you still need those skills. You still need those people, right? And guess what, that if you have your, those CCNAs, NPs, and IEs, Learning at Cisco is doing a whole lot of work to integrate a lot of these things uh, into those recertifications and the exams. So next time when you go your, take your any of these exams, you'll see a lot of questions around APIs and SDKs and all that sort of stuff. Because why? We're kind of making sure that our workforce, our engineers who are working, have invested in these certifications, they're keeping up their skills as well, okay? 
So what are we doing in, API, uh, in APO, like America's Partner Organization? We are sort of trying to uh, provide a little path, right? So the, the first thing what we are starting to do with our uh, partners, what you're seeing over here in the DevNet zone, right? Step one. This is the step one. You, have, you see a lot of these learning labs, right? How many of you did any of the learning lab? See, more than half of the people, right? So remember, did you, did you have to do, know any programming or scripting to do that lab? No, right? Because what we wanted to introduce you with that, you know, what really happens, how these REST APIs interact, what really happens in the back end when you kind of go these step-by-step -step labs, right? And then, once you have that understanding or just, you know, it's kind of uh, 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 do that by light bulb move, move, um, uh, moment, right? Then the second step, we say, you know what? Let's start doing some of the uh, Python, right? Python is sort of becoming a table stakes, right? Uh, industry standard, simple language. I gave you the example of my niece, right? Eighth grade doing the Python project. So uh, we did a lot of work with our partners, uh, Coursera, nine-week course. So we built a whole community around it, weekly support calls, you know, uh, helping people to kind of go through that course. On top of what they do, it's a free course. And once they kind of went through that, they said, okay, you know what? Now you already know some of this stuff. Let's get them uh, uh, in action. So we started to do these hackathons in our partner space. We had a, on Sunday, just before Cisco Live and Hyatt, we had, two, we were, we had an event for our partners. 200 partners were there. And we had workshops and hackathons, and it was just amazing, right? Coming up with the ideas that we're partners is taking those ideas and monetize upon it, right? Then we said, okay, you know what? What is the fourth step? The fourth step is basically all the engineers like to get some specializations, some logos and of that nature. So learning at Cisco is doing development of a lot, lot of those specializations, right? Doing a lot of that, those things. Uh, so basically, um, and with that, we also, we, we're doing some, you know, specific partner rotation programs into the engineering groups where they're developing uh, scripts, they're developing um, uh, things to automate what they're right now do manually. So these are some of the paths we're providing, right? So, uh, and this is the path you can, you can provide within your teams as well, right? And so I'm gonna skip because I'm getting the sign of all of this stuff. Uh, Anything more than Python, right? This is the guidance I provide to my partners, right? And our customers. That, you know, ba based on what areas you're working on, these are some of the, once, as I said, Python is a, t is a table stake. Do that, and after that, based on which area you're working on, do some, some of these things. Based on what you're doing, what your focus areas are, okay? Uh, so the key takeaways, right? Make that environment within your teams to continue, you know, people to, they're in that learning mode, right? You're bringing that, uh, making that environment. You're kind of working towards making your, the, the guys who love their CLI, like myself, right? I did my, by the way, I did my master's in embedded system programming. But then I got into networks, right? Double CCI, all that sort of uh, stuff, all good. But uh, work towards that, um, making your engineers as, as hybrid engineers. The other thing is understanding the difference between organic and inorganic growth within your teams, right? Where are you gonna bring the people from outside to meet the market demands so you don't miss the boat, right? And where are you gonna grow your people uh, to become those engineers? And uh, so the, with that, you know, they're just telling me I'm all up. So this is the best I could do in, in 30 minutes for you. For more detail, come to the 11 o'clock session. We'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit more detail with some more examples. Thanks a lot.